this is Frode and welcome back to Actualize Notes TV. Today you'll learn how to move from freaking out when you face obstacles and to turning them into fuel so you can become stronger and better equipped to face difficulties. Does that sound good? The profound insights come from the book The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. The Obstacle is the Way. Subtitle The Timeless Art of Turning Trials into Triumph. Ryan Holiday was once mentored by Robert Greene, who is the author of best-selling books like Mastery and 48 Laws of Power. Ryan is also a media strategist and the author of The Ego is the Enemy and The Daily Stoic. I just find him a ridiculously inspiring author. And um, he shares some spanking new insights and ideas we might never have thought about. And of course, he shows us how to rub those ideas into our own lives. Without any further ado, let's begin with the first big idea, obstacles teach. Ryan says that obstacles teach because when you, are, when you have a goal, every single mistake you make, every difficulty you face, every challenge that arises, show, cars out a path for you and showing how you can get to where you want to go. He also quotes Benjamin Franklin, who said, The things which hurt, instruct. Because it's really uh, easy to remember the things that hurt, right? So, Ryan says that failure shows us what is the way, by showing us what isn't the way. For example, when you, if you can notice that eating more doesn't contribute to you losing weight, and talking more about yourself, won't improve your relationships with other people. And if you get consistently get less than 8 hours of sleep, then you will feel worn out. This is one of the most profound ideas I just loved in this book. Obstacles teach. They carve out a path for you, showing how you can get to your goals, to where you want to go. Our second big idea is nerve. Having nerve is basically the ability to be unruffled by obstacles. No matter what happens, you are not phased. And uh, he gives up uh, an um, He says that um, it's a problem. Uh, we have a, many people have a problem because regardless of how much danger we are actually in, our fight or flight response, our stress response will uh, go off if um, uh, anything trifling happens. For example, somebody spills coffee on us or our dress gets wet. Just like uh, when we're being chased by a lion, we get all an anxious about it. And he gives a great example of someone who has real nerve. During the Overland campaign, Ulysses S. Grant was surveying the scene through field glasses. And when an enemy shell exploded and killed their horse right beside him, his eyes were still fixed on the front, not once leaving the glasses. That's a guy with nerve. That's the guy that has a job to do and would do anything to get it done. And you? What do you do? For example, if your bo boss yells at you or somebody hurls a nasty, co nasty comment at you. Everything around you is basically crashing, exploding and falling apart. What do you do? Do you uh, blink once or twice and redouble your concentration? Or do you get all anxious and shaky, unable to continue what you were doing? Joe DeSena echoes the same wisdom in his book Spartan Up, where he talks about this uh, stress response that gets kicked off way too often by trifling experiences. And he says that his way of training his body to notice what real stress feels like, to uh, develop his nerve, is to go for an early and intensive workout each morning. That way, it's the most stressful thing that happens to him each day, and he teaches his body what real stress feels like. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it about being unruffled by obstacles. And we have a very related idea here: panic. Did you know? Do you know what um, the Americans, when they uh, sent their first men to space, do you know what they trained the astronaut? astronauts more in than anything else. It was the art of not panicking. Because when we panic, we make mistakes, we disregard procedures and we deviate from the plan. 
and re when something doesn't go according to the plan, we react by uh, <laughs> by just freak having a good old emotional freak out. Uh, Ryan gives a great uh, great example of uh, someone who has learned not to panic. John Glenn, who was the first person to orbit uh, the Earth, spent a day in space with his heartbeat below 100 beats per minute the entire time. That's the equivalent of someone taking a normal walk on Earth. And he was in space, having a heartbeat uh, of a, below 100 beats per minute in space. And uh, yeah, that's just insane. Ryan tells us that, of course we're going to get emotional when we're tripped up by something unexpected that happens, but we need to learn how to keep steady by not panicking. And one great question to center ourselves on our course is to ask ourselves, do I really need to freak out about this? And often the answer will be no, because I've practiced a lot for this. Or no, because I caught myself early enough to keep my attention on the task at hand. So that's panic. 100 beats per minute. That's just incredible. Flip it. It's the fourth big idea. And flipping it simply means that you flip an obstacle from something negative to something that's positive. And that's because um, uh, obstacles really make you stronger as a direct result of them. Ryan shows a great example of this, a study. In a study, uh, some elite athletes were put through, through some adversity or a serious injury. And in the beginning, of course, they uh, reported feelings of anxiety, of isolation, of fears and doubts about their athletic abilities. But after a while, these same athletes reported uh, a better perspective, a more, a more increased desire to help others, and better realization of their own strengths. In other words, the fears and doubts they had in certain areas made them stronger in those exact areas. So Ryan tells us that we need to go from seeing, um, flip from um, seeing obstacles as something bad into a gift. Because that's really what they are, because they simply make us stronger. Kel McGonigal is a leading researcher on stress. And he echoes the same wisdom in the upside of stress. But he should uh, give some fascinating studies about uh, how people become stronger as a direct result of um, hard experiences that they have. And the more meaning uh, meaningful people's lives are, the more stressful their lives are. I uh, put, put adversity into my own life by doing, uh, turning on pure cold water for the 30 last seconds of my cold showers. And I also uh, refu almost refuse editing these videos because I need to train my ability to communicate clearly and communicate clearly in one take. How can you flip it? How can you flip something, uh, an adversity from something bad to seeing it as a gift, something that makes you stronger? And our last big idea is one I really love, Amur Fatih. Amur Fatih means a love of fate. And Ryan uh, tells us that we, uh, we cannot control what happens to us, but we can control how we feel about it and what we're going to do about it. And he gives an amazing story to illustrate it. Once, when uh, Thomas Edison was 67 years old, he came home early from his laboratory. And while he sat eating dinner, a man rushed in and told him uh, some urgent news. Your, how, your laboratory is on fire, your factory. And uh, by all the strange chemicals that were in uh, Edison's factory, uh, blue, green and uh, yellow flames were shooting up six to seven stories high. And uh, there were fire trucks coming from eight different towns, but they couldn't control the fire. It was huge. And Ta Edison? He quick, calmly but quickly made his way to the factory, through the hundreds of people and employees who were in distress and looking for his son. Go get your mother and all her friends, Edison said with childlike excitement to his son. They will never see a fire like this again. 
And uh, his son was like, what? Don't worry, he calmed down his son. We just got a rid of a lot of rubbish. And that's a pretty amazing response to having his factory burned down. But what could he have done? What uh, do you think, weeping? Or uh, yelling at someone would have helped? Build his factory up? <laughs> of course not. So instead of uh, weeping and yelling at people, he chose Amor Fati, a love of fate. He accepted what happened and did everything he could to improve on his condition. So within three weeks, his factory was basically built up again. After four weeks, his uh, employees were working double shift and churning out new products that the world had never seen. And uh, he turned his uh, $1 million loss into a $10 million revenue that year. And uh, $10 million, by the way, was about $200 million in uh, today's dollars. So that's how Edison showed that we can't change what happens to us, but we can change how we feel and what we do. Now, fellow actualizer, whenever something bad has already happened to you, you and I need to realize uh, that we, we want to use a modifati. We want to have a love of fate. That was a modifati. We need to flip obstacles from something, seeing them as something negative to something positive that's making us stronger. Panic. 100 beats per minute in space. Do I really need to panic about this? And develop your nerve by, for example, going for an intensive workout each morning, teaching your body what real stress feels like, <laughs> or doing cold showers like me. Obstacles teach. Failure shows you what is the way by showing you what isn't the way. So that was a quick look at the obstacle is the way. Thank you, Raleigh and Holiday. Now, what is the one idea that jumped out at you? Think about it. Reflect on it, write it down, tell it to your friends, and start embodying it in your life starting today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I look forward to sharing more. Have another awesome day. See ya.